Hello everyone, my name is Alice Gonzalez. I am a Microsoft Certified Trader here at Pragmatic Work. This is another episode in my report design series because we've had something cool happen here. So Microsoft and Power BI team has given us a new visual. We have a new slicer with really awesome capabilities built right into the Power BI desktop. So we're gonna take a look at that today. We're gonna jump right on in, play around. I'm gonna show you lots of modifications that you are able to do so that way you can start confidently using this slicer in your report. So here we are in the Power BI desktop. I do have my on object turned on so I can see my visuals up here in my top home navigation. And of course I have my panes and the options to switch behind them over here on the right side of my screen. Earlier in the year, when the new card visual dropped, I showed you all of these really cool options, different looks and feels of things that you were able to do with this visual. So you were able to add background images, change the shape, change the fonts, the sizing, all of that stuff in these card visuals. Now, of course, look what I had here. Well, giving us some options here at the top of our page. We had those boring slicers. Now the default option previously, of course, was this slicer, this normal one right here. And we were able to use that kind of tile feature to make this look like it was a button. Now that was definitely better than just using the previous slicer settings, but it still lacked a lot of functionality. So for example, with this slicer, I can only change the color of my default state. When I'm looking, I could only change the blue, but I couldn't change this hover color, this light gray, and I couldn't change the selected color of that black. It's just those options are just not here in the slicer settings for that default slicer. So now we have the new slicer. The new slicer has dropped. This should be, if you have auto updates on, it will automatically be dropped in your visuals for you. And you can see it has a little lightning bolt on it and it should be sorted right next to it. If you do not have your on object turned on yet, you will still have this and you'll still see this on your visual pane on the right. If you do not see it for some reason, first check to make sure that you are on the November 2023 release. And also make sure in your preview features, you can go in there and you can check or uncheck it to add it if for some reason it's not showing up for you. Now let's take a look at some options. And what I did for these new slicer options was replicate a lot of these cards because guess what? The same features that we have for these card stylings, you are able to do for the new slicer. And that just means your slicers are about to look incredibly awesome and incredibly integrated into your report. So I've done a bunch for you for this one up here. And I did the same slicers on here where I have some countries and I also have years. So I have two separate slicers on here and then also some data just so we can see, yep, this is in fact slicing and dicing, moving and adjusting and changing them. So you can see as I am moving around on this first slicer option, look how much nicer this looks than that default. And then of course, we also have this year one, which look at this fun, funky shape you're able to achieve. So lots of change, lots of options you're able to now do with this slicer just in its default state. So let's take a look at what we can do. So first off, we'll work our way down in our formatting pane and see what we have. So first off, your default size and positioning, this is kind of just your normal slicer settings for where it's at on the page. Any padding of the full slicer in, inside of the visual space. You can, of course, add a background color. I don't have my background turned on for any of these, but of course, if I wanted to, let's say, for example, put it to there, change our transparency, you can see that's adjusting the transparency behind the visual. 
For my slicers, I rarely ever have the background turned on. Normally I rely on my page background for that. You could also add a border. Again, this is for your whole entire visual and this shadow for the whole entire visual. I normally a lot of times have the title turned off on my slicers, but you can see here it is on. And then of course here it is off. I think if it is very obvious what it is, there's no need to have it on and adding to the visual clutter. So a lot of times I'll have it off. You can see over here, for the year one, that's still on. Moving into your slicer settings. So this is an important one. Here you're able to set whether this is allowed a single selection where you're forcing only one option. Notice I can't multi-click, it's just clicking from one to the other. I can't even do like a control and multi-select, it only lets one be selected. If I turn that off, then when I click, it will just natively select whichever ones and deselect as I go through. And then you can also turn your select all option on if you would like it. So in that slicer setting, that one is the same as it was previously. Then we move into our shape and here's where we have some fun. So starting off your rectangle is your default but we also have a rounded rectangle and the snipped tab option. Now for both of those, and I'll show you a few other options where I've done that, you can control each of the four corners individually. So if you want some to be square corners, some to be rounded corners, you have that option, which is really fun. Then we get our layout. And now I want you to notice something. So right now I have two rows of buttons that are showing on the page. But in my layout, I have three rows noted. Now, what does that mean? That means that I have this gap here at the bottom of my visual because it is accounting for a third row of visuals. So if I wanted, and you see if I move it up, it keeps moving and adjusting to account for that third row. So if I wanted, as I should, to have the bottom of the visual be at the bottom of my buttons, what I would want to do is actually adjust that to make sure that they are both aligned properly. So make sure you are looking at the amount of data you have showing up in your slicers to accurately show the amount of columns and rows you want. And you can see we can adjust that, change size and quantities and how everything really cleanly and nicely adjust to account for that space. We can also adjust the space in between our cars there. So if we want them to be further apart or closer together, you can modify that option. Next, we get to our text. So in your call out values, this is something that if you have worked with previous navigation buttons, done like the bookmark navigator before or worked in website design making buttons, you and paid attention in that previous video where we talked about this, when you are working on your text options, you have four states. Your default state, that is what we are looking at in the slicer for everything except for the United States, which is selected. The default state is just going to be the one that is there. You're looking at it, nothing's selected, nothing's moving, nothing's changed. As soon as you then move over it, that would be your hover state. Now, for sometimes people don't want to do a hover, they think it might be too flashy, unnecessary, so you may or may not create a hover. And then press, I also, I'm gonna be honest, normally don't set my press. My press would be the very second that I'm clicking something, what is gonna happen? So I can see for this one, I've done the default state, I've done the hover, and I've done the selected state. Now the call out value section is just gonna be the text for these. So I can see for my default state, the values there, here is the font name. You can manipulate and easily change that. Here's all of your default options that you get. I could change the size on here, um, colors, transparency, all of that good stuff here on my default. Of course, my positioning horizontal, vertical, or centered. I can decide if I want text wrap on or off, which if it was on, then you can see it's starting to wrap. Um, if the button's kind of large enough for two rows of text. The next state that I change a lot is the hover, and that's just where we are kind of moving over it. So you can see as I move over, it's adjusting, and I've set a few things up to change for this. So here in my text, I can see that my font size, when I moved up from my default, also affected and changed my hover state, which is great. It's one less thing for you to change. 
but I can see I have a darker color here. I can change positioning and all of the same stuff. You just get your same options. You just wanna make sure that it is obvious for what one is selected and where your mouse is moving on the screen. And of course your selected state, this is gonna be the one that you are choosing. I have a light blue, but I changed a darker border. Now, where did I change the darker border? That is down here in my button section. So here in the button section, you're gonna have those same four settings, your default, which is what we're looking at for everything right now. You have your hover, which is as we move over each of them. You can see that the background for these stays the same, but I have a different border on these, so that's why that is slightly adjusting. We already saw, we also changed the color of that hover text. Then you have your selected. So I can see when I click on the United States, I have this dark blue or bright blue border around it. So it kind of differentiates from the other ones that are selected. I can choose the width of that, it's transparency, all of that you can easily adjust and manipulate with what you're working on to really get the look that you would like. Then for my actual button on the slicer, I can bring in an image. So I have this, just image over here that I've brought in. I have this on my computer um, and I made that in PowerPoint. I use that a lot of times also as a background. So you can always check out my video on making Power BI backgrounds in PowerPoint or in Canva. Once you bring that in, of course you choose your transparency level. I normally will set mine to zero so it's fully transparent. You can change your image fit so normal fit fill. You are also able to set your shadow if you would like one or a glow or an accent bar and I'll have that on in another one. So that is our accent bar right over here and we'll take a look at that one next. So lots of options to play around with. We have an image section. I'll get to that in a few pages because that is a really cool new addition. Let's look at how I was able to adjust this year slicer. So we'll have the same options for every slicer, no matter what content you have in them. But I can see for this one, I went into my shape area. And for the shape, I chose rounded rectangle and I was able to change every single corner individually got me this nice funky shape right here make sure that customize style button is turned on at the bottom to allow for that individual change to occur with these the other thing i adjusted on them is that i have the accent bar on so i can see this accent bar i could change its positioning right now i have mine set to the left but you'll also see times where i have it on my right the bottom or the top Let's take a look at some other slicer options, some more cool things you can do with this for your reports. So moving on to another page, look at this fun shape. When you first put your data into the slicer, your default hover state is gonna be white, just like it is right here as I hover over the data, my default is white. That a lot of times will be fine. Sometimes we'll wanna modify that. You can see it's also gonna be black text as the default. If I have something selected, my default is a black selection with white text. So really the same as what it was on that old slicer option, we're just now able to change it. So I can see over in my shape, I use that snipped tab and then adjusted the size of that. And then for my buttons, what I did here is I had the accent bar on the top and I really made it really big. So it kind of filled that space to kind of almost look like this three-dimensional box shape here. For my other slicer, my year one, I can see I have that tab, that accent bar is over here on the right this time. And again, I chose to adjust all of those hover and selected colors to be a little bit more in line with the blue theme I've got going on. Now let's go take a look at the final page I have for you because we've got some fun ones in here. Because now, guess what? We're able to bring images into our slicers. So if previously you were a little disappointed by the slicer, you probably ended up using some third-party slicers. I know I use the Chiclet slicer a lot. So especially if I wanted to get images on to a slicer like this, I wanted to, you know, have a picture of someone's face to be able to click on their face to filter it by that kind of thing. Or so if we're looking at 
um, a particular trainer, for example, and what has that trainer taught lately, I will be able to click on that person and then see that. So we're not able to do the same thing. We can bring images in and they do need to be an image URL. So for this one, I updated the data set. I had an AdventureWorks data set, which was what I built this with. And for this AdventureWorks data set, I added in two image URLs. So for my date table, I brought in this image from Wikimedia. It's just this white calendar icon. I'll have that linked in the chat below. And then I also, on my sales territory page, also from the same source, it brought in a white globe icon. Now, of course, you could have individual ones for these. So if I wanted to bring in a separate icon for the US, Canada, France, Germany, Australia, UK, I could totally do that. And they would work seamlessly. I just chose one icon for all of them. The way that I got this one accomplished is that I have the same image, that bright blue image that I have here. I just have that uploaded twice. So one image, the default is the blue to white in one direction. And then it's hover and selected is it white to blue. So going in the opposite direction. So that kind of gives a lot more movement as you hover over that image. So that may or may not be something you want to add in. Now, for our icon, I can see it to pull that in. This is where we're finally able to use that image tab in our format section. So I am able to change, of course, those same four settings. So if I don't want the image on all of these, or if I want the image to look a certain way on them, I can adjust it for just one of those states, which is really cool. And so to bring it in, you are just coming over here into this field section. So if I were to do this again, I can pull that in. I just go to my add data, pop it out, and just find where I have that URL on my page. For mine, that is in the sales territory image. And there we go. Now you can play around with this a lot, depends on the size of your image as it comes in, whether you wanna go normal fit or fill to adjust that. You can play with transparency, saturation, you can even blur if you like. That personally gives me headaches, so I'm not using that feature, but I could see some places that probably would be cool. You can also change its position. So if I, right now it is set to the top, I could also go left or right or bottom with this one. We're going to put ours back to the top. And again, you can change that space between the image and the text down here. For this final slicer of my year one, I can see I have this calendar in here. Now for this one, I played with my transparency. For this one, I brought over that calendar icon. And for this one, for my transparency, notice I have it set to 63% for my default state. So 2005, 2007, and 2008 are all in that default state right now. So you can see that the calendar is not as obvious. But once we go to that selected state, you can see that I have that transparency all the way down. So it's pretty much fully visible here. So it makes it really obvious to show which one is selected. I am so excited by all of these slicer options. Now, you're gonna be playing around with this, creating something really awesome to go with it. We've got so many new features, which is great. See so much creativity. If you are looking for ideas though, definitely re-watch or go back and watch for the first time the rest of this report design series as I talk you through lots of the elements of report design, starting with and going through color theory, report layout. Where should you even be putting these slicers? Because normally they're not going to be taking up your entire page like I have them here. So look forward to you going through this. Leave me a comment below if you're just as excited as I am about these new slicer options. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see all of the videos as they come out here on our Pragmatic Works YouTube channel. And I will see you in our next design video.